every painting, every painting I've ever done, everyone I've ever done, it's, it's been perfect. It's been absolutely perfect in terms of color, composition, technique. It's been absolutely perfect. It's been a home run in my head before I even start. Welcome to the Conscious Rebel Podcast with your host, Lucy Morningstar. If you're an artist, a creative, or someone who is looking for your life's purpose, or you know what you want, but you're just waiting for a sign or the guidance to finally pursue your heart's desires, then you definitely want to tune in to this interview with Andrew Tischler. Andrew is a masterful artist, um, an amazing, incredible art teacher, and just a downright incredible man. In this interview, we talk about how to let your purpose and meaning find you instead of chasing it, how to approach the feeling of not good enough, something that even Andrew at his level experiences. We talk about the importance of focusing on what is really important in life, especially when you are dealing with paradigm shifts or feeling fear and overwhelm. We also take you um, into his Patreon community and you get to pick his brains on how to critique artworks, both his own and his students. If you are watching the video version of this podcast, which you can find on YouTube or Rumble, I will also put up his incredible paintings on the screen, which you can see. So um, let's dive right into it. When you have those sell out shows and you often mm -hmm. experience a low after that, like, can you tell me yeah. a bit more about like what it was like, like you have a sell, so sell out show and you're feeling supposed to feel well, you know, cool, great. But what happened? Mm. Why will you have a low after that? I, I think there are several reasons for it. Um, th there's, you know, there's some emotional reasons, um, some physical reasons, but also I, I might even be able to add to that some spiritual reasons. But I'll start off with the obvious one, the, the physical reasons, you know, when you think about the outlay of energy that you you go through to just put together a body of work, it, it takes a lot. And I don't think people that don't paint realize what an undertaking that is to put together a body of work of say anywhere between a dozen to two dozen paintings mm -hmm. for a show. And, and I was often involved in group shows. So there were about three or four artists. So that did take the pressure off me, but it's still a period of months to weeks um, to, to prepare this stuff. So there's a lot riding on it. Um, by the time the show comes around, you know, you're, you're just physically depleted, mm -hmm. but there are also, you know, some emotional reasons as well. And, and I, I really can only speak personally, but yeah. I feel that uh, what I tended to do was I attached the outcome, like my success or my feeling of being worthy. I attached that to the, 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 the outcome of the show. You know, if I sell all my paintings and that means I'm good enough and I'm worthy of love or praise or whatever. And when I achieved that, I realized that I didn't get the thing that I had attached or associated with, with achieving the goal. It's like that, that old thing where it's like, you're, you're continually searching. Everybody wants to be happy. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I, I really feel like for the most part in life, we're looking in the wrong places. And for me, I had, I had attached that idea of happiness and fulfillment to the outcome that was attached to that show. So then you achieve this thing and then you end up feeling, well, now I still feel like heck. And then you get even further down in the hole because you're like, oh, well, what does it all mean? Mm -hmm. I had to completely let go of that. I've had to completely rewrite the script of who I am as a person and what success actually means to me. Mm -hmm. um, and now success to me is very much focused on, on purpose. And, and again, that's different for everybody, but I feel like I'm, I'm just now beginning to tap into what I feel my true purpose is. And it involves other people. It's being of service to others. Um, and that's where the spiritual component comes into it for me, is that I feel that if I'm really on track, I'm of service. I am, I am doing the thing I'm meant to be doing with what I've been given. And that's how I, I you know, feel. Um, I don't know. I won't, won't go as far as to say I know I'm doing that. Yeah. But I feel like I'm, I'm honoring my God by, by doing 
you know, the most I can with the gift he's been giving me. And that ultimately involves other people. So then I get wrapped up in the process of it, mm -hmm. you see. Um, mm -hmm. So it goes from being attached to an outcome to being pro process focused and service oriented. And that's now where I feel I, I have the most fulfillment. And, and the funny thing is, is I haven't done a show in a long time. I mean, I had, I was part of a group show in Perth in October, but I, I wasn't there because of the way the world is, it's all mm -hmm. weird right now. And I, I get that, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a weird headspace. I'm still working it out. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, it, it makes, I think it makes perfect sense. Even I think a lot of people can relate attaching, um, your definition of like our definition of success to a particular outcome and most of the time is like money related right it's like very practical yeah. kind of outcome that we think yeah. if we achieve that then we'll be worthy we'll be happy and and but then um when you get there you find out th that outcome doesn't actually well, create it, that kind of uh, emotional yeah. fulfillment well you you get to a place where you achieve the thing and you're like is that it Mm -hmm. is, is that is that all there is is that what i've been fighting for this whole time what was all that you know and 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 that that ultimately makes you feel lower and it's like well obviously that's not it that's not the thing that you should have been chasing the irony is is that when you're not looking for it it finds you mm -hmm. and that's the thing that i found it's like it's like Wait a the, what do you what do you mean it finds you the it was uh, it well I'll, I'll give you an example i'll give you an example i i was not looking for my wife it just happened uh -huh. But I had spent years and years and years looking for love and an attachment and a commitment. And I was, I was, you know, I'd spent years looking for my, my dream girl. And then one day I just gave up on it. And within three weeks, she appeared in my life. She was just uh -huh. right there. And there was no question in my mind when I saw Rachel for the first time, it's like, this is, this is a woman I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. And, and if that happened to me in a, in a moment, it was like, she was there and then it just hit me. I'm like oh, far out. And, but I wasn't looking that. And I think that's the thing. It's like, when you just focus on the thing you should be focusing on, the rest of the stuff can kind of take care of itself. I mean, yeah, there's some practical stuff as well, but what I'm saying, I guess, I, I don't want to be too ephemeral, but I think, I think for the most part, we need to go back to the basics and just get really psyched up about painting, just creating mm -hmm. art. I mean, you know, if this is going out to creative professionals, how involved are you emotionally in the process of making the thing? Focus there, get really involved and really deep into the process of doing the thing. Love it. And that love is going to come through you. You're going to end up putting more time and energy into what you produce. The quality is going to be a lot better because you've put in more time and energy. You're more emotionally invested in it rather than focused on outcome, outcome, outcome. Social media. I mean, I've, I've talked to people on my podcast about this all the time. You know, Thomas Fuhardy, uh, Joe Paquette was another one. But social media is a huge thing where we're so focused on these KPIs or key performance indicators that, that mm. we build up. Like, like I, I am worthy of love when I reach 10,000 followers or this or that. Again, it's all the external stuff. I, I guess what this really boils down to is that battle between the inter internal and the external. It's internal. It's internal. And it took me a lot of years and a lot of head, hitting my head against the wall to go, you, you can't focus out there. It's about what's in here and, and, you know, getting really involved in the process. I, I, I'm really all over the map, Lucy. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Yes, it doesn't make yeah. sense. Okay. So there are a couple of things I want to ask you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about. Okay. So you say focus on the process. I think, you know, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's like mm -hmm. my, um, uh personal experience especially the last um couple of months right the last mm -hmm. two years is like i started to started to see the world a bit differently and that kind of okay. thing accelerated a bit the last couple of months right basically it yeah. was like everything basically i thought i knew about the whole world has like like turned upside down right so i don't want to get too that. much into it you know probably i hear you our views probably you. can be very different than other people's. But I think regardless of what specific things we're talking about, yeah. it is probably common, maybe common experience for a lot of people when they go through some phases, probably not just once, where mm. um, their experience and perspective or what they think is, is around mm -hmm. their world, their environment can be turned mm -hmm. upside down. And they just like, yeah. so I, like what I'm going is like, one question is, 
it's easy, I think, probably to just focus on the process when um, a kind of like a basic sense of safety and security. I, I just found I couldn't really just process or just becoming, you know, fine tuning my skills and just do this. Um, what is the point of creating and producing? I, I, I totally hear you. Um, and I must admit, I got into a very dark place. I think the last couple of years have represented for a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot mm -hmm. of people, uh, a real paradigm shift, a shift yeah. in the way we view ourselves, a shift the way we view our world, uh, power structures, um, all kinds of things. Now, again, I don't really want to get canceled or you canceled, but I can just say that you know, I personally, let, let me put it this way for anybody that wants to read between the lines. If I shared my opinion openly, um, then that that would be, uh, let's just say unwise. And, and we'll leave it at that. Because, you know, nowadays, like we, we don't have free speech. We don't have an ability to express an opinion. But I, I started looking at this and I started following money. And, mm. and that completely, when I say following the money, I'm following the money in terms of the global thing that's going on. And that revealed yeah. a lot to me. And then I was like, oh, wow. So what this can do is it can lead to a place of pa panic and, and fear. Mm. And when you're in a state of fear, and, and quite often that's coupled with overwhelm, you shut down. Mm. Now, one thing that we know, you know, from just the way our brain is wired is that there are different parts, you know, to the brain. We've got a, a very basic primal reptilian brain, right? Uh, as it's known, which is sort of closer to the base. And most of the higher functions are towards the front of the brain. It's an actual thing where when you are in a state of fear or panic um, or overwhelm, your blood flow is constricted to the base part of the brain. So mm -hmm. now you're a very binary, it's fight or flight. We don't make good art when we're in that state of mind. No. And so a lot, what, regardless of what you think about what happened over the last couple of years or what's going on right now today, regardless of what you think about these issues, there's a lot of people that are feeling fearful right now. And, I, and I'll count myself among them, of course. The world's a very uncertain place. But I also know that the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Mm. You know, that's 2 Timothy 1.7. It's, it's a really important verse for me because I find myself keep going, I keep going back into that headspace. And so I want to I want to get out of that and really kind of focus on, okay, no, no, no. What was I put here to do? So the, I think the point is, is that you're here. We're all here. What are we going to do with what we've been given? There's nothing I can do about that stuff outside. It's going to happen. But one thing I can do is I can focus on the people that are following me and give them as much as possible and make them feel good, make them feel inspired, make them feel motivated, lift them up. Um, you know, we, we can... We can, as, as Thomas Fluharty puts it, you know, we can exalt in the coolness of art together. You know, this is what my Patreon community is all about, what that Facebook page is all about. And I, I really want to create a space where people can not worry about that stuff, focus on the stuff that we, that we do want to focus on. The, the world is going to do what the world's going to do. And again, you know, putting our focus and our attention where we're not going to have any change or be effective at all is just a recipe to, to you know, just destroy ourselves, I think. Um, mm. I, and it's not to say we don't care. I mean, it's not to say I don't care. Of course I care. Of course I'm affected by this stuff just like everybody else. But, you know, I just, I'm just choosing to put my focus someplace else. Mm -hmm. So when I do that, I, I feel that I'm nicer to be around. Um, mm. I'm a better husband. I, I'm a better father. Um, I have more to give. Um, and, and I think that's what I was put here to do was to be of service, to love and to give. Um, mm. And I, I, I think what the world does and what a lot of people are also waking up to and, and what the paradigm shift has been, um, I think that what the world does generally is it puts us into a state of fear and lack. Mm. Be afraid of this thing that's coming. And by the way, you're missing this in your life. I think that drives the vast majority of everything, human behavior, the way commerce is set up, 
if you yeah. didn't feel you were lacking something, you wouldn't go and buy that stupid crap that you really didn't need anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and look, I, I'm, I'll speak for myself. I buy a lot of dumb crap that I just didn't need because I'm like, oh, well, I'll, I'll feel worthy if I just have that. If I just get that, I'll feel much happier. You know, we all get in that trap from time to time. And I think that the, the system is perfectly set up to perpetuate that. And that, that drives the engine. What I'm saying, though, what I'm trying to do more and more with, with my particular creative path is just go, okay, I, I'm not going to put my focus there on the things I can't control. I'm not going to put my, my focus on anything external outside of myself, like an outcome or a sale or this or that. I'm going to focus on my art and being the best teacher I can be and just just... I had a buddy of mine and, and he used to tell me, um, Andrew, just be loving. This is when I was really messed up. He's just, just be loving. That's it. And, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll second that. I think that's the key. You know, just be loving. What, what does that mean? Just be loving. Like it sounds well, like think I, about it. Yeah. Th- 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 think about it in this regards. Like we can approach a, a scenario with um, preconceived ideas, judgment, anger, apprehension, fear, or we can approach it with a state of love. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything, Mm. you know, ourselves in particular, you know, I'd spent a long time, you know, just beating myself up because I wasn't enough because I didn't measure up to the outside external thing that I was trying to measure up to. Mm. You know, Lucy, I'm telling you right now, I got a lot of garbage that a lot of people won't see coming. <laughs> They're like, because I, I, I hear it. Look, I, it is what it is. I see the emails. I read the comments. People have built me up into this character. They think they know who they're talking to or what they're getting. But I, I mean, I'm struggling with this stuff just as much as everybody else. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a person too. I'm a human being too. But I think the thing that I, I need to learn to do, and I think what we could all do is, is, is just approach things for lack of a better way of putting it, because this is now the major focus of my life, is to be more Christ-like. And, and a, I, I know this isn't a religious podcast or anything like that. And I, I don't consider myself religious. I, I, I'm a Christian, and I think there's a huge difference there. Christianity is a personal relationship that you have um, with, with Jesus. And, and to me, I focus on that personal relationship. And it's like, okay, pick up your cross and walk. There's the path. So that's something that's become a real focus for me. And, and what was Christ? Well, Christ was, was love mm. in the flesh. You know, mm. I mean, yeah, listen, he, he flipped some tables. Don't get me wrong. You know, he did flip some tables, but mm. you know, he, he was, he was loving. So mm. yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what else I can add to that. <laughs> so there is, so, so from what I mm. hear, the purpose is very connected to your spirituality. It is now. Yeah. Mm. And I think regardless of what the label of the partic- any particular religion is, like Christian mm-hmm. or Buddhist, um, mm-hmm. everyone's, I think, like, spirituality is, you know, it's where you find your purpose. Like, why are you put on, like, what, why are you on this earth right here, right now, if there's really, sure. if it's just like, oh, everything's random occurrence, I think that's where we have the existential crisis. Why am I even here? Well, I, okay. I, I, I'll give you a little rabbit hole to go down. Um, and, and a lot of people, um, I'm probably going to upset a lot of people by saying this, but I think a lot of what we learn in the, the education system, in particular in public school, about the nature of our reality, I think it's completely bogus. Because I mm-hmm. think that the, the image that we're given of the nature of reality is to make you as the individual feel as insignificant as possible so that you are even more in lack and you continue to perpetuate the same thing that's going on and on and on. But what is what, like, again, I, okay, I, this is just my particular worldview. Okay. And I get it that it's not for, for everybody. I mean, there's mm-hmm. a lot of people with their own spiritual walk, but I keep going, okay, what does the Bible tell us? Well, it tells us that, that there is a God and that he loves us beyond measure. And he knows every hair on our head. So I don't even know every hair on my head. I know, I know there's a fewer today than there was yesterday, but I don't even know that. So, so, so this means that this is somebody that knows me better than myself. So in one, in one aspect, I've got the world telling me that I'm insignificant and this all happened by accident. And then my spirituality is telling me that I'm loved beyond measure. So I, 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 I think that there's, there's power in one and there's lack in the other. I, 
now that does that mean I, I'm attaching to false hope? Well, no, I get it. You probably don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but I, I believe that there's enough evidence for uh, absolutely irrefutable evidence in my mind for why that's a legitimate worldview. Otherwise, I wouldn't believe it. But mm. yeah, that that's so. So yeah, my purpose is very much attached to to that now. But it wasn't. I mean, I'm very new to this. I'm very late to that game. Um, you know, Christians call it, you know, being saved. I wasn't saved until late 2019, right before 2020 hit. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so it's it, very it, recent. So it looks like this last two years, even though on one level, right, it mm -hmm. would be difficult. Because I think it's difficult whenever you have like a big change, like a basically yeah. a big transformation Um I think in the in the butterfly uh, metaphor, for example, right, mm -hmm. when they become a cocoon, basically the caterpillar has to completely melt into goo in order to become a butterfly. So can you imagine that oh, process? Wow. Yeah. That process, we can think of it as like, like a painful process. And the last couple of two years, even though painful and waking up to see, you know, what's going on, it's almost in another way turned into a blessing because if you're not, well, not for all these kind of things that happen. So if not for something that would have pushed mm -hmm. you. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I, I think there was a lot that was happening in my life as well, uh, personally, um, and that was kind of gearing me up for a massive change and a massive mm -hmm. paradigm shift. But I think often paradigm shifts are coupled with a, 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 a quite a sense of loss and a lot of pain. And then you start to rebuild. Um, Otherwise, what ends up happening is that the house of your life just looks like, you know, an absolute dog's breakfast where one thing's built on another. This is kind of a process of, of raising it to the ground, completely wiping it down to the foundation and building again. And, and that's kind of what, what happened for me. Although um, I came to this realization for myself before I had any inkling about what was happening mm. in the world. That's why the timing is really kind of weird for me. Um, but I, with, with God, I don't think there are any accidents. Mm. Um, so I, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting one, but I, I will say that the last couple of years has strengthened my faith rather than weaken it. Um, it's, if anything, it's absolutely strengthened it. And it's like, okay, yeah, no, I think, I think this is the right way for me to yeah, be. And, and I am really grateful for that because your stuff, like I'm on your Patreon, right? In your Patreon mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. when I or like watch your videos, especially the critique videos, like yeah. I just <laughs> feel um, so uplifted. I, I feel that sense of warmth. Like, you know, oh, you, you give critique oh, to people. Soon. And I, yes. like, I'll be honest with you. And probably if anyone yeah. from the Patreon community hear me, please don't get upset. Like sometimes when I see... <laughs> When I see the students or, 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 the, or the, um, the picture and I say, oh, you know, this is clearly not that good. I'm just be honest. Yeah. Okay. Forgive me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. And yeah. then, and then like, that's just my first impression. Of course you teach that like what's working, what's not working and what if, right. That, that's before I just go in, like, it, like a lot of time I find that I, I don't sit down and just look at what's, what's working, what's not working and what if, but here you talk about it. Like I, I could like, for example, if I see something and I just say, that's clearly not good. And then I would just can immediately say, okay, why this is not good, why this is not good, right? That, that's yeah, easier yeah. to do. I think probably this is like our naturally where the human mind will go to what's not working, like focus on the, 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 yeah. the, the, the threat and the bad. But now mm -hmm. when I watch your video, you always start with what is working. And even yeah. with something that I just feel like, eh, right? And I say, oh my God, and you see beauty in everything. And but but we all do, Lucy, we all do. You know, we, we absolutely all do. I, I hear what you're saying, but the thing is, is that, and a lot of people might think, well, you're putting it on, you're really clutching there to tr try and find something beautiful and something that's not particularly beautiful. And on no, that, and you, no, that's, that's, that's not what thing. I'm saying at all. Like, oh, listen, okay, okay, when, let when, me get you when, right. When, okay. you, when you start seeing like, you know, mm. when I see something done, you say, clearly not good. Like, and then I hear you say, what okay. is working? Okay. And, you, and you have to say something. And, and you know what? From, like, people have to probably see it to, um, right. to really feel it. Because it's not something, if, if, so, if right. I'm pretending to just point out things that clearly can't see is good, and I'm just saying, oh, this is working, mm -hmm. like in a pretentious way, just because I'm making out a video, people can tell. 
Okay, yeah. but when you are saying it, the sure. reason I'm feeling like so uplifted and feel like a, such like a big sense of warmth coming out from the screen, mm -hmm. it's because I can clearly feel like, gosh, like you really genuinely deeply see like what is working, like what is the, the, the yeah. beauty in, in something that at first glance, mm -hmm. I look at it on a surface level without like just, it's clearly not a very good one, right? But you genuinely, mm -hmm see what is working and that's what i feel so mm -hmm. like get that the constructive feedback like i think like that's what a good teacher um like that's very important to a good teacher right you you like look mm -hmm. at your work you're a master like you mm -hmm. you pay massively in uh, like this every yeah. subject thank you yeah like, yeah okay i appreciate that thank you i don't but agree but i appreciate uh, that <laughs> uh, well and you know if if you i'm a work in progress like everybody else but yeah like everybody yeah. else but then you are like way up there. You are amazing. And um, you are like skill wise, right? And everything as an artist, technically, mm -hmm. you master mm -hmm. every subject. You know, the big mountain landscape, the seas, the porches, like, is there anything you can't you can do? Uh, hello, I, uh, uh, there, uh, you could fill libraries with the stuff I don't know and can't do. Uh, like seriously, uh, well, in, terms and, of, it, in terms of painting, it, it's it, it, especially in terms of painting. There's there's some paintings that I see that that just leave me breathless. Um, I, I get focused and maybe sometimes overly focused in technique that sometimes the poetry and the emotion uh, is not present in some of the work. And I know when I'm on and I know when it's not working. I, I know I can tell. But back to your point about, um, a, a, you know, in terms of trying to find the positive in people's work. You're right. I, I don't try to find it. I, I do see it, mm. but I've had practice trying to see it because what I'm talking to when I'm, when I'm talking into the mic and I'm doing the recording, I record it right here at my desk. I apologize for the noise outside as well, Lucy, by the way. Um, I've got can't a truck going can't past. Can't hear the, the noise. Moment. You can't hear it? No. Uh, okay, that's good. A massive truck just went past. I hear it. <laughs> um, anyway, I, you know, I, I, I had to start talking to myself in a nicer way, because I think, by and large, what we have the tendency to do when we're painting is we look at something and we're like, oh, this is crap. This isn't working. The composition's off. The colors are off. It's no good. It's just a very short gap to go from this painting's no good to I'm no good. Mm. And so many of us artists are in that headspace of this isn't working. This is crap. I'm not good. I, I'm not working. I'm crap. I, I tell you, I run into mm. a lot of artists who are feeling this way. And what I try to do is, okay, okay, look, let's not see it worse than it is. Let's not see it better than it is. How do we see it actually as it is and have something to grow? The truth is, is that nobody, not even the person doing it, has got an objective view on what has been created. Not even the creator has, has got an objective view. And when I say creator, I mean creator of the artwork, okay? Uh, no, nobody has an objective view of, of what has been made. So we have to play a bit of a mental game. And it's almost like if you charted it like a graph and, and, and the objective truth is right there at level, we start below because we're like, it's not working. And then we're trying to get back up to that, but we end up getting further and further down in despair. <laughs> what, what we tend to do, what I'm trying to do is plot that graph to do this above and below that line and get closer to it. Mm. So it's like, okay, what's working? Let's start off and really celebrate, really celebrate the things that are working. Because I tell you right now, every painting, every painting I've ever done, everyone I've ever done, it's, it's been perfect. It's been absolutely perfect in terms of color, composition, technique. It's been absolutely perfect. It's been a home run in my head before I even start. The truth is, though, when I've done it and I'm looking at the final article, I'm going, oh, missed the mark again. That happens to me, by the way. That happens to me for every single painting. All right, but I don't get down about it anymore. Now I'm like super pumped about it. And I'll, I'll show you the, the mental game that I'm playing with myself, but I'm not playing a trick on myself. Like you have to genuinely occupy that space. So I started playing that with myself. So I'm talking to other people the way I talk to me when I'm looking at my work. Mm. So I'm like, okay, 
I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about that. I'm not, ha- oh, that's crap. That's crap. Miss that, miss that, miss that. Background's a bit clumsy, blah, blah, blah. Too much white there. It's got too opaque, whatever. And then uh, start again and be like, whoa, 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 stop, hold up. What is working? We did a really nice job with that transition of yellow to blue without it going into green. Created a nice round form on that egg that you're painting for that still life for your beginner's course. That works. Maybe the background's a little clunky, but at least that works. And so now already I'm starting on a high and then I can start to address what's not working. Already feeling good about it. So I'm in a little bit of a safer position to be able to judge my own work. Mm. But also when I'm looking at somebody else's work to get them to see, okay, there's some stuff here. It's not all bad. There's some stuff here that's clearly working. There's some stuff here that we need to address. Then the third question, and I love this. What if, what if I did A, B, C, D, E, whatever? What if I took this into new territory? What if I explored some potential or some possibility that I wasn't even in, you know, thinking about before? What if, sorry, I'm going bright red. It is sweltering up here today. It's a hot day here in New Zealand. <laughs> I don't know if you're putting out the audio version or the video version, but people are going to be like, Andrew, why are you the color of a beetroot? I'm <laughs> suffering for you here, Lucy. I'm suffering up in the office. And I won't even put the fan on because it'll be too you know, noisy. Um, I, I envy you. I envy <laughs> you because in Sydney here, we barely had any summer this year and mm. last year. And you know, it's been rained for three weeks now and a lot of oh places my goodness. are flooded. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Sydney, this oh. is flood. Anyway, it's, it's, don't get me go down that flood and why uh, there's rain for two weeks because it never happens in, in Sydney, Australia. You know, right? Our weather is not like that. Anyway, don't go down that. Yeah, I, I, I know that there's, there is a rabbit hole there to go down. Uh, <laughs> and I'd have to say, I'm, I'm probably with you on your <laughs> view about yeah, why this is happening. <laughs> But um, yeah, but no, I, I appreciate what you're saying. And I, 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 that, that, is, that is difficult. I mean, yeah, I, well, I've lived all sorts of places. It is nice to have a summer finally, but because um, we didn't get one down way down south at the bottom of the South Island of New Zealand. It was cold. You just all moved the time. to New that, Zealand like last year, right? Or, or no, I moved, I moved to New Zealand in 2017. Oh, so okay. I, I, I've been in New Zealand for, for a long while, um, but I used to live in New Zealand I, I, in Wellington for a period of time that was uh, between the age of six and 10 years old. So mm. that was um, that I, I spent a little bit of my childhood in Wellington um, uh, before then at the age of 10, moving over to Perth in Western Australia. Okay, so, you know, um, before I ask you about your mm. um, your upbringing and how you become so good. Shall I, shall wanna... I finish my point that I was making though about the the yeah. what's working, what's not working, yes. what if kind of thing? Okay, yes. so 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 essentially, just to tie a little bow around that, um, and and what people will see on the critique page. So again, that, mm. or the critiques on Patreon is that that's the mental game that I'm playing with myself. And I, mm. and I guess I'm getting relatively good at it. And I'm trying to teach other people because I'm trying to say, hey, look maybe we can enter this dialogue mentally, you know, in our own studio, not beat ourselves up so much, but also grow and then help each other to grow. And, mm. you know, I, I, uh, most of what I see on that, that page, it's, it's all, they're all great ideas. So if nothing else, let's celebrate the idea. You're painting mm. a castle. Awesome. I love castles. Castles mm. are great. Let's talk about how we could do it. You know? So you know, anyway, what, what I, oh- what I was just about to say is like, Andrew, like, you know, I think for a lot of people, if they look at your work, it's so easy mm-hmm. to say what is working. Like, I understand, like, because you're the artist, like you are already yeah. at that level. So when you look at your own work, of course, it doesn't match up to what you envisioned before you started. Like, if mm-hmm. I look back to myself, like I didn't, I was an artist all my life. I knew you, like, I knew I kind of, you know, as a page on your page, I knew you, you told your teacher when you were at school that, that you wanted to become an artist since you were you know, a kid, but that wasn't my path, right? I only started painting when I was um, pregnant, when I was, you know, so like pretty late in life. When I look at your work, and of course, like Andrew, it's easy to see what's working. Everything is working, <laughs> right? I, like, you know, that, like honestly, like for a lot of people, that like a lot of people, that's what, what they would say. But then when you then look at your own work, say, Haha, of course, a lot is not working, right? Um, but then, like, if I then, again, look back to the work that I did, like, five years ago, like, when I started, or eight years ago, and I could see that I had come a long way, right, and, and I would look back and say the ten, um, eight years ago, I would love to be where I am now, like, 
in terms of mm-hmm. the artwork that I make. I was like, you know, that like I would probably say, oh, if I could only do that, like the the past me. Mm-hmm. But then it, mm-hmm. I think we constantly have this thing in 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 our mind. I think it's a. I think like I used to just never see the half I've come and always beat myself up. It's like this is not working. Like this is not good enough. And and look at what what, what Angie was doing. Like you know, like mm. there's like no way you can when you compare with people that you think that's so good. There's no way you can measure up. Like it's so easy to then feel despair and just not good enough again. But I like mm. but. I feel like I've started to have a bit of shift. The reason I can see what's not working in my work and why it's not working, it's because I have to upgrade this, like playing computer game. Like okay. I leveled yeah, up, yeah, yeah. right? I leveled yeah. up. You That's leveled up. I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, leveled yeah, up, yeah. right? So rather keep yeah. leveling up. And so, mm-hmm. so I think I, um, that, uh, that has, has really helped me. And I think you've done a lot, like when you, I watch your critique, now you talk about it, realize you've done a lot of this, like what's working, what's not working on your own work. That's probably why it makes it easier, like so natural for you to see what's working in other people's work too. Yeah. Well, think about it this way as well. Like I, uh, in, in the thing I love about those three questions, what's, what's working, what's not working and what if is that the way you can actually apply that to everything, not just art, but everything like, mm. like life, like business, like re- relationships relationships <laughs> in particular. Listen, you want, you want a secret to a healthy, long lasting marriage? Ask yep. those three questions. What's working here? What's not working here? What if? What's working here? Man, I, 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 I you know, what's working is, you know, we're getting some nice time where we get to, we get to walk the dogs as a family, whatever. What's not working? I don't, I don't take enough time to really show her how much I appreciate or whatever. What if, what if I did an extra special something or surprise her with something or a little letter or a flower or something, just little things throughout the day to let her know really, you know, even though I'm so busy all the time, she can at least know I'm still thinking about her. I don't know. You can apply this to everything, but just on the, on the, on, on, on that note with um, applying it to my work, what you're doing with me, like externally, is you're starting off rather than, than start off with what's not working and down in the pit, you're now up here on the top of the peak and you're going, what's working? Everything's working. So you're not <laughs> seen objectively either. But this mm-hmm. is the thing. This is the thing yeah. about the, the, the truth is neutral. The truth just exists right there in the center. And we're trying mm. to find it, but, but it's there. And it's difficult to, to hit. So sometimes we come above it. If you forgive the analogy, we come above it with, with being overly positive. We come below it be, being totally negative, but we're never quite hitting it. So with me, then you've probably got to focus on what's not working and start drilling that. And if you want some ideas about what's not working, go to the comments section on YouTube and people will tell you what's not working. I mean, that on is- your, a, On that, your paintings? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, of course. I hear about it all the time. I get comments all the time. People tell me exactly what they think. And that's fine. That's fine. I I knew what I was getting to when I went online. It doesn't make it hurt any less. I mean, I'm still got feelings and stuff. I read, I'm like, ow, guy, thanks. But the thing is, is that it does, you can't put somebody else in it. This is, this is what Martini was saying, you know, and I I got Mm. a lot from his books early on. You can't put somebody else on a pedestal without putting yourself in a pit. Mm. The truth is, is that there is no difference between you and me. There's Mm. absolutely none. Um, and, and when we actually really own that and really see that, then it, it, it means that I'm, you know, I, I, I'm no better or worse than anybody else. I'm fallible just like everybody else. And I'm growing just like everybody else, but there's something else. I was thinking about this as an idea, right? We, Mm. we tend to put artists from the past in particular on pedestals. Yes. And we, we look at them and we're like, oh, Da Vinci. Da Vinci. Oh, Da Vinci. There are some paintings by Da Vinci that drive me mental, like mental. And I'm just looking at them going, why'd you do that? It's Da Vinci. Who says that? No one says that. That's such an arrogant thing to say. But the thing is, is that we do, we tend to put people on pedestals. So it almost becomes sacrilegious to knock them off that pedestal and say, ah, it's not really my thing. The truth is I've got a couple of Da Vinci books, but I ain't looking at Da Vinci for inspiration. I'm looking at John Singer Sargent. Yeah. I'm looking at Joaquin Soroya. I'm looking at Albert Bierstadt. Like I'm looking at, at these other people that Anders Zorn, you know, mm. I like that kind of painting, you know, but everybody goes, what's the greatest painting that's ever been painted? The Mona Lisa. Well, mm. I don't think so, but I mean, but the, I'm just giving you an example. So mm. we, 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 we miss the point when we put anybody up at a level 
like that. It, what mm. we're trying to do and what I'm particularly trying to do with my own, my own art education and striving towards mastery, I'm a long way from it. I'm a long, long way from it. And I always want to be learning. But I, I think that we, we kind of miss it if we, if we kind of, we almost bump our, our, our question or our thought process outside of, of what is true. You know, we can't see things better than they are. We can't see things worse than they are. See them, try to see them as they are. And um, I hope that makes sense. But it does make I, sense. I, I, yeah, yeah. And, and you yeah, say, like, yes. when you put something on a pedestal, you mm -hmm. almost automatically put yourself in a ditch, like mm -hmm. John Demartini says, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's really true. That's, I think that's a, a, why, you know, we often see artists, artists especially because, because, probably because I mean, we are in the community, um, often see that coming up, like the, the comparison thing. When you see someone that's so good and then you compare, you feel shit. Oh, oh man, the that's oh. because you're putting yourself in the pit. <laughs> I would go into like almost this depression, this deep depression, looking at people online going, why can't I have as many followers on Facebook as Joel Ree has, you know, this painter from Queensland, he's amazing. He paints hyper-realistic waves and tigers and icebergs and all sorts of stuff. And he's accepted by the art establishment and he's selling epic works for epic prices. I'm like, why can't I have that many? I mean, I can paint. Why is anybody noticing me? And I'd get in a huge despair comparing myself to other people. It's a recipe for misery. Again, mm. it's not true. It's not even real. Go back and focus on the process. And the process is what really, you know, got me out of that ditch that I was putting myself in um, by, by comparing myself to other people. I tell you one thing from somebody who has achieved, you know, broken a hundred thousand now on Instagram, a hundred thousand on Facebook, cracked a hundred thousand on YouTube. That's not where it's at. That where it's at is like that, that core group of people who you feel are part of your community. The numbers at a certain point feel meaningless, but I was chasing those numbers in the beginning. I wish somebody had told me how empty I'd feel once I got there, because again, it's not about the external thing. It's about continuing to show up and do the thing you love. Let the rest of that crap go. Let it take care of itself. And, and I, 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 I'm a really big believer in that, uh, but also I don't want to be I don't want to be flipping and just say, okay, build it and they will come because that's not mm -hmm. necessarily true either. Yeah, yeah, we do need to use these tools that we have access to and there are smart ways of using them and there are smart ways of reaching more people. And, and man, I, I know that I'm one that, that needs to brush up on my skills. Like I had my buddy, Sam telling me, he said, you're doing TikTok all wrong. I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, y you need to be getting way more views than this. Let me help you kind of thing. Um, but e even so, you know, I, I just showed up and I just didn't really stop. Um, but the minute I got focused on the numbers was a minute that I lost touch with what I really needed to be focused on. So what, with the numbers, right? I'm sure a lot of people mm -hmm. will have this question in mind, even though we're talking about like, like just go back to the numbers because it's very practical stuff. Doesn't getting that 100K on Instagram, YouTube, whatever, actually help with sales then? Like that's the bottom line, right? <laughs> Does it help with sales? Well, sure, it, it can help with sales, but I, I'm, not, I'm not even focused on the sale mm. even more. Uh, I, I'm focused on, I, I tell you what I'm focused on. Mm. I, I'm, I, I put a call out on my Patreon page to the beginners and, and people that were really struggling with some things. What would you like me to teach you? I answered that question. And, I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I got some great responses, you know, from you and, and from everybody. And I was just like, man, okay, there's some areas that I really need to focus on. And so that's where I'm just going to put my attention and energy. I know the beginner's course will sell. I know mm. it's going to be excellent, but I know that it is going to be perfect. No, but I, I, I know that it's going to be the best I can do at that time. And that's all I can ask for. Or anybody else can ask for it. It'd be my very best for that time. And then I'll grow. For instance, I put out a portrait painting workshop. I'm super proud of that portrait painting. You know, it's a, a series of demos. Don't yeah. be thrown off by the workshop title, but you know, it's a series of demos that are available online. And really proud of that, that product, but I'm already thinking about the next portrait workshop. I'm going to take that one off the market. I'm going to put a new one on because I'm going to already see ways that it can be done better. 
Um, mm. and, and so again, my, my focus is really on the, on the process, but is there, is there a practical element to making some sales with more numbers? Well, of course, but again, it's not as many people as you think. Mm. It's actually the number is surprisingly low. Mm. And I started with a mailing list of 70 people. That's all I started with. I gave a demonstration to Alfred Cove Art Society in Perth uh, several years ago, maybe nearly a decade ago. And I handed around that room a sheet of paper and I asked everybody to put their email on that sheet of paper so I could email them sometime with some tips, tricks, and techniques or whatever. And um, I got everybody nearly to put their, their name on that sheet of paper and I just started emailing them. And then I got a few people to attend some workshops. Um, I was already selling work. So it's already came to the teaching thing as a, as a reasonably successful, you know, full-time artist. Mm. I've been doing it full-time art or teaching um, art since I was 21 years old. I've never had employment elsewhere. Um, so, you know, I, I had to work out a way to make it work, but I started with, with a relatively small amount and it was enough that I could, uh, make it, make it happen. So I'll give uh, people like numbers. So I can give you an example of numbers of how it worked in the early days. I taught a physical workshop where I would teach, you know, just to a room of people. I made the decision that I could not effectively teach in one room more than 10 people. I couldn't do it. Mm. So what I thought I'd do is I'd go, okay, look, what would I need to make for those 10 people in order for it to be viable for me, but good value for them? Mm. So I was like, well, I think, I think a hundred dollars per person per day would be nice. And if I organized a block of workshops that was four weekends um, at a hundred dollars per person per day, that means the block of workshops for a period of four weeks would be $400. Well, right there for teaching one day a week, I was making a thousand bucks a week. Mm. And so that was an idea. And so how quickly did I fill up that course? Immediately. Within the moment I announced it, it was sold out. Wow. And then I was like, oh, this is cool. Then I did the very best job I could. I still remember those first lessons that I gave. I, I couldn't speak. I was not very good at teaching. It was my first mm -hmm. one. I, I cringe at some of the stuff that I said in that workshop. And I'm so sorry to all of those people. Peter Zeller from Patreon, she knows all about it, <laughs> but you know, I'm sure she might, she's a very sweet person, uh, but I'm sure she'd go, oh no, it was fine. It was great. Cause she, she came to several of my workshops and, and there's a few people from the Perth crowd that I, I'm sure are on the Patreon page. Um, but Peter, Peter Zeller is one of my, my OGs, you know, from back in the day, she's, she's great. But I, um, I, I don't know, like I, 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 I suddenly twigged on something that if I just focused on giving the best I could in the moment that the rest would take care of itself. Mm. And, and that has been true when I've started focusing on those external things, again, like the numbers thing, like the money thing and chasing after that, that's when it's up for me and I don't do my best work and I make really stupid decisions. It's, mm. it's about, it's about connecting. It's really about connecting with yourself and really genuinely trying to fulfill a need in somebody else. Yeah. And, and see, you still have like Peter, that, Mm -hmm. that, that you connected from such early on and still in your community. How amazing yeah. is that? It's awesome. I, like, I, I feel like, yeah, it, it's so true. Like I, I like for, for me, I like just um, the first year of the, the pandemic thing, like I actually had like one really good month. Like for me, like a $9,000 sales month is like really good month. Like that, or, like, that, that was like my best month. <laughs> Right, mm. probably like really little for look really low for, in some people's eyes, like. But that was like my best month. Um, D did you say sorry, nine thousand dollars in one yeah, month? But it was like once in a blue moon. Okay, <laughs> it was once that is in amazing. A, but that's, that's amazing. In, but that's like once in a blue moon, and also um, I also had a good a good month in um Jan January. I had like mm -hmm. I, uh, almost four thousand, but that. Yeah. But but my sales is very inconsistent, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, f I feel like even when I had a really good month, um, my, for me, it's a really good month. My th thought instead of, yay, really happy, what I often feel like is, is like, huh, I'm not going to keep up with that number. And, like, uh, and, and I also, because like, 
I think for people, like I, I am not depending on that um, art sales to pay rent and everything. When I focus on my, um, like put my focus on chasing the numbers and getting the sales, like you say, like there's no fulfillment at the end of the day. Because if the mindset is not there, even after I reach the th sales, which exceeded my a goal, like 9,000, I just want like 5,000 would be great. But then I got a 9,000. And then I still feel, felt like crap because the, the, the external result does not create the feeling that you want, like the fulfill, feel, feeling of fulfillment and happiness. You know, people talk about it all the time. It's not the money that you want. You want to have, you know, um, other purposes. Like I think I hear that all the time, understand it on a mental level. And I think really just very recently, this last couple of weeks, that I start to really feel it, not just know it intellectually and start to really like feel it. So, th so that's why like, I reach out to you because I feel like mm -hmm. for artists especially, it's very easy um, to be, like we're all quite isolated and especially what's going on, not just artists, a lot of people are isolated. And when you're isolated, yes. it's easy to then focus on the fear and then you disappear, the despair and all that kind of things. And yeah. I feel like then, you kind of like what is the purpose and i feel like yeah the purpose really is like you, what you said before all the things out there you can't control dr frankel's man search for meaning like what is mm -hmm. your attitude in this mm -hmm. point in time in the circumstance that you are given right mm -hmm. and and you have like you and you have focused on serving your community right that's what he does mm -hmm. <laughs> follow mm -hmm. you all this time and that's why I, even when i came to know about you later I get this sense of warmth that has helped me. Um, so mm -hmm. I feel like connections and really helping people, serving people, like it's what, it's, it's what we do. It's probably art can do to connect yeah. and share with yeah. people, you know, create, like what, what can you create? Do you create more despair or do you create connection, community and? I, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of threads there and, and I, 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 I fully appreciate what you're saying. I just want to kind of give an example, if I may, of, yeah. of how, I, how I really feel about this. Because again, I think deep down, we all feel that sense of, of what we know we want to really be doing. Um, mm. And going back to those workshop days, it struck me almost immediately, and then this was consistent, that the youngest person in the room was me and I'm the one teaching it. Mm. So here I am in my twenties and then early thirties teaching these workshops and, and oil painting. And there wasn't a hair of color in sight unless it was dyed. Um, that, and, and that's not to disrespect my audience, but these were older people mm. that were of retirement age that now they had time on their hands and a little bit of money from working their whole life, mm. um, they now were giving themselves permission to do what they really wanted to do. And I know a lot of people find themselves in that situation. And I don't want to be, you know, flippant about this. And I, I don't find that necessarily amusing at all. Um, what I started to do is I started to ask people around the room, um, just individually. So what would you do? Where are you from? What, what do you, what, tell me about yourself kind of thing. Um, and, and, you know, you're, you're taking this class, you like to paint. Okay. You know, I started asking them about it and I got the pretty much a consistent answer for the most part. I wanted to do this when I was younger. That's what they would tell me. I wanted to do this when I was a young mm. person, but my parents wouldn't let me because I would never amount to anything. And they were worried I would starve to death. So they said, no, 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 Kevin, you're going to go into advertising. Uh, Joan, you're going to be a lawyer. You know, yeah. uh, uh, Barry, you're going to become a doctor. No, you're going to be a podiatrist because your grandfather was a podiatrist. Your father's mm -hmm. a podiatrist. Now you're going to be this. So, so a lot of people are an engineer or this or that. It doesn't matter. But that for some reason, for, for a lot of people, if maybe a particular generation, it was a little bit more of this than other generations. But generally speaking, people shied away from it because the people that were caring for them. Um, and, and again, I, I have no doubt in my mind that families generally want the best for their children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't want their kids to suffer. So when you hear somebody saying, I am going to be a fire twirler in the circus. That's really what I want to do. You'd be like, what circus? 
I don't know. I'll just wait out on the side of the road with my thumb out. Maybe one will come along and pick me up. That, that must be what we sound like when we're telling our parents what we want to do for the rest of our lives. They're like, you want to be an artist? What are you crazy? So a lot of these people now we're in a position where they're like, I want to do this. But then there's this kind of this juxtaposition between the freedom of having time and money on their hands, but also the knowledge that the time mm. is somewhat limited because mm. now they're here in their seventies and eighties. Some, mm. some people in their sixties, you know, I, I, I think that as long as there's breath in the body, you know, and you've got today, there's, there's an opportunity for you to start doing what you really want to do right now. Um, mm. So I just wanted to throw that in the mix. Uh, it's never too late to start. It's never too late to start. I've got a lot of people on Patreon in their eighties that are, that are, that are, somebody just emailed me the other day and they're like, I'm in my, I'm 82 and I'm loving this. This is cool. You know, I'm like, awesome, man. That's so cool. That's awesome. So I, I, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with being old. I hope to get older, older one day as well. But I think the thing that I just struck me was like, you know, life is, is, it is a fleeting thing and, you know, doing what we love, not necessarily what we want, but what we love. I think that's really important. Mm. And now, you know, with the tools that we've been given now, I, I think we have access for the most part. Like we've got opportunities now that we have at our fingertips, despite all the crap that's going mm -hmm. on in the world. We've got some things that are that are happening now that are opportunities that didn't exist 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Mm. Uh, long may it continue. I hope it does. You know, I do have some reservations about where everything's going, but I, I hope to continue to, to keep doing it as long as I can. Uh, yeah. and, and I think the online world gives us that opportunity. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. We need to wrap this up in honor of your time. And we didn't <laughs> have a chance to go into your background. Like, I know that you started really early. And you wrote up on your Patreon. Then you told your teacher what you wanted to be when you were a kid. That was to be an artist. And he said, you're going to be starving, Andrew. And yeah, then yeah. look where you yeah. are now, right? So we're never too yeah. old to start, but also never too young, right? Yeah. yeah. Look what Talia's Absolutely. doing just from your podcast with her this morning. <laughs> Talia and and I also I know I know a couple of kids that are out there. You know George Lennon is a guy in the UK, young artist, up and coming. He's going to be huge. Cody mm. Oldham is blowing up right now. He's going to be massive. Um, there there are just so many people out there doing it at a young age. You know in their teens. Uh, you know I, I think Cody uh, is about to turn eighteen. So wow. it's, it's just epic what's, what's happening, you know, uh, with, with, with some people. So yeah, you're never too old and you're never too young. Never too young. Um, but I, I, again, like I, I, maybe I did have a bit of a head start and, and I did have a little bit of an advantage from that point of view that I, um, my, my father is an artist. He still sculpts and my mother was an artist. Uh, sadly, she passed away about, um, about three or four weeks ago now. So oh. it's still, still quite recent, but, you know, she was a talented painter in her time, but, you know, looking back at, at, at stories, you know, from my parents, you know, day, she started off full of promise and full of hope, but unfortunately, you know, she gave up on her dream. Mm. And, and I, so I had that benefit of looking at things from afar, um, you know, happening in my family and examples of what was working, what wasn't working. And then what if, what, what do I get to now do with my life? Um, and, and that's not to disrespect my mother at all. I love her so much. And, and I, you know, I, I pray for, for her, um, yeah. you know, uh, but it's, it, it was very interesting having that, that example. Uh, my mother and I were, were terribly close. She left when I was two, just to kind of put it in context there. Um, so I, I didn't grow up a, a whole lot with her. Um, mm. But but I, I grew up with stories and I grew up around some of her artwork, which was quite interesting. And and I, I have a few of her drawings, just beautiful drawings. And I still have her original folio from her 20s uh, here in the drawer. I've got her original portfolio, which is really cool. So, so yeah, it's... Um, it's a journey, man. And I think, mm. I think if there's one thing that I could leave people with, if there's mm. one takeaway from this, it's that, you know, art, art is very much a journey. Don't get in the habit of comparing yourself to anybody else. Focus on the things that you want to focus on 
on those internal things, on the things that you truly love and the things that truly make you happy and let all the outside stuff take care of itself. We, we produce really bad work when we're focused outside of what we should be focused on. So we really need to go inside for that stuff. And uh, yeah, if anybody listening to this wants to, wants to reach out to me, I'm sure you'll tell them where they can find me, yeah. but uh, Patreon is a great you, place. I, yeah. yeah. Tell us tell your website and they can search. Andrew okay. Fischler well, I, 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 yep. I, so I, I've got a website. That's, that's the best place to find me first and foremost, andrewtischler.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Andrew underscore Tischler underscore artist. Uh, I'm also on Facebook. Just search my name. I'm all over YouTube. Search my name there. I've got a channel there. It's probably my biggest thing is YouTube. Uh, but Patreon is where I'm really focused on, on the community aspect. And I've got a wonderful group of people there. And there's a private Facebook page associated with Patreon. So when people sign up, then they can find out how to find the Facebook yeah, page your and join Facebook, us on that. Your Facebook group is like probably one of the very few, like probably one of two that I <laughs> frequent. Because it's yeah. amazing. It's a it's, really good It's community. awesome, isn't it? Yeah, yes, yeah. it's a great community. Awesome. There's beautiful people on there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very awesome. much, Andrew. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. It's been awesome. Yeah, and have a great life and make great art. 